Welcome back to marketing. Today is chapter eight and we'll be taking a look at advertising and sales. We'll um, have a better understanding about how our advertising efforts affect our revenue or our money coming in, AKA our sales. So advertising is one important way managers communicate marketing messages to target audiences, all right? Technically advertising is any form of marketing message that managers pay for and deliver in an identifiable but non-personal way. So it isn't like you're talking to your best friend. It is a way to reach your target audience, but you're a little bit unpersonal about it. You, Your number one priority is to promote your business or your product or, or something of that lines, okay? Or encouraging people to come in. So personal selling is the presentation of a marketing message delivered by one or more employees of a business for the purpose of making sell, making a sell, all right? So you need to remember that. When managers engage in personal selling, it is often referred to as an event sell, all right? Or simply as sales. So um, in suggestive selling, okay, let's talk a little bit. I wanna make sure you understand what suggestive selling is. Suggest it, and I'm just gonna pull it from the book. I am on page 176. When personal selling is undertaken by a staff member, all right, by service staff, it is often referred to as suggestive selling because it takes the form of making a, re a recommendation, all right? So, making a re recommendation. Um, hi, would you like dessert today? Would you like french fries with that hamburger? Um, would you like to go to a large? You know, up, 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 would you like for me to upcharge to a large? Those are suggestive selling. You ever notice that you, you go into a restaurant or something, they're always, would you like a, a cocktail today? Would you like, you know, something with that? They're, they are suggestive selling. They are upselling, all right? Now, um, advertising. Recall that managers use customer demographics, right? Areas. Customer demographics, age, ethnicity, household ownership, and psychographics. What are their hobbies? How they like to live, their interests, their activities. To identify target markets and that these managers create marketing campaigns to reach these markets, okay? So, advertising is often the most visible part of a company's marketing effort. A well-planned advertising campaign is a coordinated series of advertisements and promotions used in the same time frame to meet certain objectives, okay? So, what that is saying is that a campaign is a well-thought-out plan that's going to be delivered incrementally to, the, to their target audience, okay? Communicating a message to a large audience often uses a variety of media, um, generating awareness of an interest in a product or service, um, persuading the audience to take action, such as purchasing a product, um, strengthening existing customer preferences and loyalty, that would be your, um, your uh, customer loyalty discounts and things like that, creating or reinforcing an image or product or organization, uh, differentiating an operations products and services from its competitors. You must always remember you have to figure out how to set yourself apart from your competitors. Um, sales promotions come in many forms, coupons, contests, giveaways, um, and they may target families. Uh, if they're targeting families, it may be free meals for children, right? All right, so let's move on down a little bit. Um, advertising has a disadvantage. It's not always the best choice for every situation, giving benefits of advertising. Um, one might expect that all operations should include advertising in their marketing mix. Not always. You, you don't always have to have advertising in your marketing mix. Um, it, it 
it definitely can hinder sometimes. So I want you to look at the summary of advertising disadvantages and ways to deal with them on page 177. That is uh, exhibit 8.2. Um, advertising sometimes can be impersonal. Kind of like me talking to you from this computer. I had rather be seeing y'all's beautiful faces in my classroom and interacting with you than talking through the computer but we must do what we must do, right? So it can be impersonal. Um, it, 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 can, it can compete for customer's attention, um, or it must compete for customer attention. Um, also, it can be costly, so keep all that in mind. Um, establishing advertising objectives. You must um, have awareness, all right? Um, you, which is, let's see, complete unaware of an operation. In some cases, target audience may be completely unaware of an operation, all right? So you're, you're wanting to bring awareness to your establishment. Um, for it, it says this may be the case, for example, when the business has recently opened. Like I said, your new establishment, you want to bring awareness to where you are. Um, trial. Without knowing this information, trial, the term used to describe the purchase or the, or, oh, sorry, describe the purpose and the use of a product or service for first time by a particular customer. So that would be a trial period or a trial. Um, here's a sample, here's a trial, that sort of thing. Um, usage. Usage is a term marketing professionals use to indicate the number of times a particular customer frequents a business in a specific time, in a specific time frame or time period. Um, in most cases, restaurants and food service operations cannot reasonably expect customers to eat every meal with them. In some uh, QSRs, quick service restaurants, customers' frequency may be very high. In this segment, a target customer may visit the establishment two or more times a week. By contrast, many of the fine dining establishment customers may choose it only for special occasions. So you've got to determine how often um, will your customers come into your establishment, okay? You need to always um, have that on target. It would be a mistake to think that the average customer usage rates for lower price establishments are always greater than those for higher priced ones, okay? So you really do need to understand the usage. Now, let's talk about brand building a little bit, all right? Brand building is ever so important. Branding your company is important or your establishment. Um, brand identifiers, and I need you to remember that, brand identifiers are your name, your logo, your signage, employee uniforms, your decor, your pricing, your service level, and other characteristics that when put together make one operation different than the other. It would look really funny if you walked into McDonald's and they had on Sonic uniforms or Burger King uniforms or if you went into, let's say, we all know Hooters, right? And we know the uniforms that the girls wear at Hooters. If you walked into another place and saw that type of uniform on um, the, the servers, I mean, these are brand identifiers. I mean, Hooters hit the market, right? Hooters has an underlying implication to its name, but it also is part of its brand, its logo, it stands out. People know who Hooters are, um, just like people know who McDonald's are. They know who Sonic is. Um, so those are things to think about. Logo is your graphic mark. We know what logos are or emblems that um, are attached to your establishment or your company. Um, taglines. We don't, we do see taglines, but we don't see a whole lot of taglines. Um, um, McDonald's, I'm loving it. We know what that means. Um, 
again, taglines or slogans. They're usually three to seven word phrase to identify um, and complement your logo, okay? Uh, the other thing is traffic building. Traffic is the term marketers use to identify the total number of customers served by a business. All right, so let's take a look at developing advertising strategies on page 182. Um, if you look at exhibit 8.4, it has your common advertising objectives. It's to build traffic, it's to build people coming in, it's to bring awareness to your company, it's to um, let new, new users have a trial, trial of whatever it is you have. It's increasing your usage and it's brand building, okay? Those are the common advertising objectives. If you look there on exhibit 8.5, you see a sample of an advertising schedule. Guess what? Everything doesn't go out at one time. They are meticulously placed in incremental uh, places for an overall targeting effect, all right? So week one, you notice there's a draft in a newspaper on Sunday. It is submitted on Wednesday, all right? The budget for that was $350, and I won't go down all of this, but you can look how they space things out. They've determined print works. They wanted some print. Um, they sent out some letters in the mail. Um, they created flyers. They've got menu inserts. Um, then they also have radio ads. Now, what is in here? There's no social media, so they opted not to do um, social media at this point um, which a lot of social media now on Facebook you can advertise for free but now Facebook also has limited people that you can reach so if you know that you're going to advertise on Facebook you would budget Facebook ad time okay or, or you would budget for that Facebook advertisement um, let's move on over Let's talk about evaluating advertising effectiveness. Because again, you have to have a way to measure your um, response or your outcome. You have to have a way to measure that. You need to know, is it effective or not? And if it's not, if you've spent all that money, you wanna quit doing it if it's not effective, if it's not changing your bottom line or changing the reason why you're advertising. If it's not bringing more people in or if it's not um, generating more sales, then you wanna quit spending your money in that avenue or, or on that particular um, marketing adventure. An objective measure is a measure that can be used to evaluate real change data, all right? So that's objective measure. Subjective measure, however, takes place only in the mind of the evaluator. Um, two different evaluators could come to two different con conclusions about performance change if it is measured subjectively. So, which way would I want to do it? I think I would want objective measure. I would want to know exactly what the real change is in data. I would want it in writing, but you know, they have two ways. So, let's talk about their um, identify specific and measurable advertising objectives where possible, all right? So one would be, let's see, effective measurement tools, number of items sold. What's gonna tell us the number of items sold? That would be our POS system, right? If we have a POS system, that will tell us how many, how many people came in, um, how many of those were sold, um, how many orders, how many people, um, how many reservations, new customers, total revenue. I definitely would make sure I'm checking out my POS system um, in order to keep up with that. And again, it says here, fortunately, uh, POS systems can easily generate much of the concrete measurable data that your establishment um, it would be looking for or would want to look for. Um, measure and act. In, in most cases, the measurement will involve accumulating data during a specific start and stop time period. Um, the data should be summarized properly and kept up to date if there are to be, 
if they are to be usable, okay? So you would not want to use data from three months ago or a year ago or two years ago on your operation today. Now let's talk about personal selling. Personal selling by managers. Although those outside the industry may think that all customers come in, in based on their own dining decisions. There are a variety of situations in which one customer makes the buying decision for a large number of others. How many of y'all have gone out to family meals? Um, this type of business can be very profitable to a restaurant or food service operation. Let's, it, some of those are like holiday parties said family get-togethers anniversaries weddings rehearsal meals uh, birthdays um, bereavement meals off-site catering opportunities uh, there are five specific steps that uh, are to be taken by the manager so that he can improve operational revenue through the sale of these special events prospecting trying to find new customers selling Consistent of, uh, consisting of making contacts with the customer, answering questions, trying to close, finalize the sale, communicating or informing current and potential customers about what is for sale, servicing, gathering information. Um, all of those um, are definitely a great way to increase your bottom line dollar, increase your revenue, increase your sales. Um, typically, those who are, who are experienced in restaurant and food service sales know that focusing on buyer type is another good way to establish uh, personal selling objectives. For example, a restaurant recently decided on hosting a holiday party for companies and organizations. Um, and. Uh, Organize holiday parties for companies and organizations. Um, though, for example, a restaurant recent, recently decided that hosting holiday parties for companies and organizations will be an important revenue source, right? Potential customers include three distinctive buyer types. I want you to look at those buyer types there on page 187. Group one, the group includes those who have not held holiday parties in the past. Or there may be a group uh, that includes those who will be holding a holiday party this year. Or the group who has held a holiday party. So, so you need to keep those things in mind. Now, developing a personal selling strategy, you need to set high target goals, okay? You need to plan it carefully. Determine the objective for each sales call, all right? You need to understand who you're targeting, why you're targeting, make a plan to target them. You need to understand your objective. What is your objective in this um, advertisement or this marketing um, that you're undertaking? Ask relevant questions. Listen. You've got to listen attentively. Uh, wait patiently. You're going to have to wait to figure, you know, give people a chance, figure out what the results are going to be, all right? Um, adapt quickly. If it's not working, quickly figure out what to do next. If you discover a week or so into it that something was wrong or customer's needs was incorrect, um, the original understanding of the need was incorrect, um, you, you need to be able to adapt quickly. Uh, focus on the customers more than themselves. Ineffective salespeople too often want to tell customers about themselves and their establishment. Okay, Many times this can include information that is of little interest to the customer. You really, you know, I think that's an art and it's something that I probably struggle with because when I meet people, I immediately want to talk about what's going on in my life. Sometimes you need to sit back, you need to wait, and you need to give others the opportunity um, to share more about themselves. And that's what that's saying here. Um, don't be a pushy salesperson, all right? Don't be a pushy salesperson. And prepare for objections. Guess what? It may be too expensive. It may be too small, too large, too far away. Uh, doesn't offer enough menu options. You know, you're, you're not going to please everybody. Not everybody's going to be on board um, with what you're trying to do. You need to follow up. 
you need to you know look for prospects continually keep in touch now personal selling by staff like I said upselling all right upselling is a personal selling strategy by your it's by your staff it's by your server um, and it is, like I said, it is uh, french fries with that burger, or would you like to um, have a, a large, would you like to upcharge for a large, only 25 more cents, um, that is upselling. And you need to train your staff. Like with anything we do, training communication goes a long way. So you need to train your staff how to use um, suggestive selling and upsell and uh, you know that can help increase your bottom dollar um, or um, increase your check sales your customer check sales it can take a meal if you add a bottle of wine to a meal it can take it from a you know a, a ten dollar meal to a thirty dollar meal potentially if they love Dom Perignon or something like that so um, you need to, to encourage your, um, your uh, employees to suggest a sell, upsell, and things like that. So um, evaluating personal selling effectiveness. You know, obviously th there's gonna be some things that are reasons for low sales. It could be the economy's bad, like right now. Um, the industry's down or you know it could be that you're not selling the right items that the the items that your customer is not interested in your prices may be too high or your competitors prices remember we got to always think about our competitors um their prices may be lower so guess what i'm going to lower that um that's usually the way it is all right so um you you're going to assess your results assess your knowledge assess the operation you can increase your sales by um, on-site merchandising. I won't go too much into that. That's like um, offering products. You, you may sell a cup with your logo on it or a t-shirt with your logo on it, um, your packaging, things like that. Um, products, placement, packaging, all of that plays into your overall selling, it, it plays into your overall branding, your overall looking, um, uh, your overall look of your establishment or your company, and as well as your um, pricing. Pricing is important um, to the sale of a non-menu item as it is to the menu item. So always remember, make sure you're, you're pricing adequately. You want to, um, don't price yourself out of business, but don't undervalue yourself either. So anyway, if you have any questions about this chapter or any concerns, obviously uh, I'm saying this at the end of every chapter, I'm here for you. Um, I'm here to help you succeed through this course. We're almost there. Oh my gosh, this is chapter eight. We only have three more to go. And uh, gosh, I'm just having so much fun with you guys. So anyway, uh, make sure you're doing your review, your learnings. Make sure that you're checking in with your case study questions. And uh, until chapter nine, uh, y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.